Turns out George W. Bush's decision points may be less important than his book tour's destination points. In our third story, following Bush's admission that he ordered the CIA to waterboard prisoners, the conservative mayor of London, England, has warned our last president that if his tour were to make any stops in Europe, quote, he might never see Texas again. Yesterday, Mr. Bush was in front of a decidedly home crowd at the Reagan Library in Simi Valley, California. Later on The Tonight Show, he was Jay Leno's guest, and he got into the act. What's all this extra security about tonight? We have President Bush on the program tonight, so everybody gets patted down. Like even you? I mean, this is your show. Makes no sense at all. Tell me about it. Listen, go easy, Grove Master. His best acting since that State of the Union. Um, in his new book, Bush writes about his decision to waterboard alleged 9-11 plotter Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. According to the former president, he was asked to approve waterboarding by the CIA. His response was, damn right. They say, Look, he's got information. I said, find out what he knows. And so I said to our team, are the techniques legal? And uh, a legal team says, yes, they are. And I said, use them. Why is waterboarding legal, in your opinion? Because the lawyer said it was legal. It said it did not fall within the, the Anti-Torture Act. I'm not a lawyer. And, uh, but you got to trust the judgment of people around you, and I do. Despite considering waterboarding torture, the current Justice Department has declined to prosecute the ex-president. In the wake of Bush's admission, the group Amnesty International has called for criminal investigation and, quote, in the absence of a U.S. investigation, other states must step in and carry out such an investigation themselves. This week, the British newspaper The Telegraph, London Mayor Boris Johnson, a conservative, a Tory, issued the following warning. It is not yet clear whether George W. Bush is planning to cross the Atlantic to flog us his memoirs, but if I were his PR people, I would urge caution. The real trouble, from the Bush point of view, is that he might never see Texas again. One moment he might be holding forth to a great perspiring tent at Hay on Y. The next moment, click, some embarrassed member of the Welsh constabulary could walk on stage, place some handcuffs on the former leader of the free world, and take him away to be charged. Of course, we are told this scenario is unlikely. W is the former leader of a friendly power with whom this country is determined to have good relations. But that is what torture authorizing Augusto Pinochet thought. And unlike Pinochet, Mr. Bush is making no bones about what he has done. Done. Let's call in Jonathan Turley, scholar of constitutional law at George Washington University School of Law. John, good evening. Hi, Keith. The mayor of London's not necessarily saying that he would push to have Mr. Bush arrested. He's just positing that this could happen. Is it, is it likely, or did he just write an interesting article? Well, it's an interesting article. It's also an interesting idea. Uh, the fact is there, there is a basis to arrest George Bush. Uh, he has a memoir where he is virtually bragging about ordering a war crime. Waterboarding is defined as torture. It's been defined that way by international courts, by U.S. courts. And he's being quoted, and he's, in fact, doing interviews, where he seems to take great pride in the fact that he ordered something that constitutes a war crime. And the way this works is that the country itself, in this case the United States, is expected to carry out our duties under international obligations. But if we don't, if we act like Bosnia, if we act like other countries that, that shelter people that commit torture, other nations are allowed to enforce it. And that's what he risks. This could be a very interesting book tour. Um, we called the Decision Points publishers for the itinerary for Mr. Bush, and they say they have no European book dates planned. We know he's been to Canada since he left office. Is there anywhere else that an attorney, such as yourself perhaps, would advise him, don't go? Probably Western Europe, I would start mm -hmm. with. Uh, you know, you might want to avoid Spain and Italy. Uh, they have people there that really take human rights seriously. It's not a sound bite. Uh, they have judges there who would sign a warrant uh, for someone who likes to brag about war crimes. You're better off doing book tours in cities like Beijing, Damascus, Tehran, <laughs> where you can actually find this book in a how-to section in those cities, because those are, those are places where I'm sure he'll find a lot of natural natural allies and readers, but I'm being quite serious here that his natural audience uh, are those countries that I think relished the idea that the United States was embracing torture. Mm -hmm. This was a great thing for them. Well, the, and, and the mayor of London also wrote in that op-ed there that, his, that this country's loss of credibility when it comes to maintaining uh, its position on human rights violations around the world and other nations, uh, it just been shot to hell. I mean, has our global reputation recovered at all from the Bush presidency? Yeah. <laughs> 
No, it hasn't. I mean, I was just in France a couple weeks ago, and I talked to a lot of lawyers from European countries, and they're quite frank that we look like hypocrites, and it's hard to argue with that. You know, we have a law from 1994 that says that we will prosecute anyone mm -hmm. for torture committed in other countries. We prosecuted uh, Chucky e. Taylor, gave him 99 years for torture in another country. So you, what, what is destroying our credibility and continuing that process is President Obama, who is saying, Saying, I'm not going to enforce these laws. It's just not politically convenient, even though I've got Bush and Cheney going around doing actual tours talking about something that is a defined war crime. Did you hear of anybody on your travels who had uh, any prosecutor who had heard of this book and the revelations in it who might have been moved to actually act based on the sort of boastfulness of the Bush autobiography? Well, I, got, I must tell you that the view in Europe is that the United States is not going to fulfill its obligations. There's a great deal of talk. There's many organizations in Germany, even Canada, who are saying we need to enforce it because we cannot be viewed as hypocrites of allowing someone to come onto our soil and actually talk about how he ordered torture. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Turley, a professor at George Washington University School of Law. Great thanks, and great thanks for the laugh. I needed that tonight, too. <laughs> thanks, Keith. Thanks, John.